I've been all over the world the past couple years filming for the Catholicism Project. We've been to Rome and to Jerusalem, Mexico City, New York, Paris, uh, Warsaw, lots of different places. But I must say, nothing has affected me the way the city I just visited has affected me, namely Calcutta, India. We went there to film in those places associated with Mother Teresa and the work of her sisters. So we weren't going to the relatively presentable spots in Calcutta, but to the meanest of the mean streets there, some of the darkest places in the world. And um, there are certain images that are burned into my mind, I'm sure, forever from Calcutta. One was of a, a kid, or maybe 10 years old, and he was gathering horse manure with his own hands. And our guide said he's going to gather that to sell it, you know, later. Um, I remember a woman just outside of the Mother Teresa um, headquarters, the mother house, who was just uttering this blood-curdling scream. She was mentally ill or she was disturbed or I don't know what the trouble was, but she was just uttering this frightening scream. I remember being surrounded by um, kids begging, you know, looking emaciated and looking very needy and gesturing to their mouths uh, with a kind of, you know, desperate uh, gesture. Just the sheer filth of Calcutta. It's a bit like living in a, in a garbage dump. Imagine the, the worst garbage dump you've seen. And now think of the, the whole city that way. Things just thrown everywhere, uh, a, a stench that just gets in your nostrils from the time you leave the, the um, hotel. Um, so some of, the, some of the worst and most overwhelmingly negative images I've ever seen. I, I said to somebody, it's a bit like um, moving through a nightmare. You come out of a nightmare, you describe you know, what, what happened to you. It was a bit like that, moving through the streets of, of Calcutta. And I think of this. I think of Mother Teresa, who began you know, her work as a Loretto sister in Calcutta. But then on her way to Darjeeling, which is far north of Calcutta, on the way to her retreat, she heard a voice. She identified it as the voice of Jesus, calling her to this um, radical commitment to found an order that would serve the poorest of the poor. And she knew all about the poorest of the poor because they lived right there in Calcutta. You think of you know, the poverty in our cities, it's nothing compared to Calcutta. She knew that, she knew what it was like, and heard that call to bring the gospel precisely there. Uh, and we went to film her mother house and went to film her sisters. The first day we um, visited her grave, which to me was very moving, I said mass, right there in the room next to her grave. And you see the people coming in, the pilgrims coming in, and with obvious devotion, a deep sense of prayer, you know, lighting a candle and, and praying. And I was thinking, you know, probably in 500 years or 1,000 years, they'll still be coming to that spot to pray. And we were there just, you know, now, what, 13 years after Mother Teresa died. Uh, we also visited her very tiny cell in the mother house. Maybe it's 12 feet by 12 feet if it was that big. Um, a bed with an impossibly thin mattress, and a little, more or less a picnic table. That's what she had, like a table with two little benches attached to it. The only decoration, I think she had a photograph of herself with the Pope, and then a picture of the little flower, which I found very moving too. She took her name from Therese of Lisieux, but this utterly simple uh, place within the context of this uh, squalid um, city. The next day, though, we filmed at uh, a couple of her, um, uh, the places where, the, where the, her sisters minister. The first one was a home for kids, and uh, it was very hot when we arrived. It was like 115 degrees in Calcutta, and the electricity had gone out that morning, so even the little fans they had had failed. So we're in this stiflingly hot room. Kids were in various cribs and places, and the nuns were, were caring for them. And the one that stayed in my mind is this young nun uh, her name, I don't remember, but her smile, I think I'll never forget, because she was there with this young kid, a year and a half or two years old, who was blind. Her eyes were kind of sunken in her head. And um, the child was obviously very connected to this sister. She was like her mother. And the sister said, she's my special baby. And she was, you know, holding her. And as she held her, this absolutely radiant smile comes over her face, you know. And it just struck me in the midst of all of this squalor and all of this darkness and negativity. And here's this, this joy, this radiant joy on the face of this nun. And of course, that was the Mother Teresa gift. That's what she was. Anyone that saw her there in Calcutta testified to it 
It was the joyfulness that came out of Mother Teresa. And see, that is what's really struck me. It's a lesson of Calcutta. We spend all of our time trying to find joy. That's what all human beings want. Religious, non-religious, rich, poor, men, women, everybody wants joy. Here's the mistake, though, that 98% of us make. I'll get joy by filling up something in me that's lacking. That's the game we play. We say, I'm missing something. I don't have enough. And then we fill in the blank. It's money or power or pleasure or esteem. There's something I'm missing, and I won't be happy until I get it. And so then we strive and strive and strive. And so you know, read most of our lives under that rubric. Most of us spend most of our days doing just that, seeking to fill up the emptiness with something you know, from the outside. But see, it just doesn't work that way. There's what the Bible's telling us from the first page, what the whole Catholic tradition tells us, what Mother Teresa and all the saints tell us. It doesn't work that way. And see, deep down, we all know it too, don't we? We strive and strive and strive, and we, we fill up and fill up, but we're not made happy. You're made happy precisely by turning your own life into a gift, by emptying out your life, by giving away what you have in love. That's what fills you up. And see, Calcutta and the Mother Teresa sisters in the midst of it signal this with enormous power because there's nothing there. There's wealth is none of it. Pleasure, it's the opposite of pleasure. Power, everyone is, is destitute. Uh, honor, no one's honored. It's a place where there's, there's nothing of the good of the world. And yet in the midst of it comes this radiantly joyful smile of the sister because she gets it, she understands it. Joy comes from the emptying out of the self in love. And so we know it from the Bible, we know it from the great tradition. But what happened to me in Calcutta was I saw it, you know, and sensed it as viscerally as possible. And that to me was the great lesson of Calcutta.